Hi everyone. I'm going to demonstrate in this lesson an optimum assignment problem. And uh, the example I've got here, we have four, four people, say A, B, C, D, and we have four different jobs, job one, two, three, and four. And the numbers in the grid represent the costs for each person to do a job. So job, person A will do job number one for $20, but they'll charge $25 to do job number two, and so on. Now we can only give each person one job to do, and we want to assign these so we get the smallest total cost, the minimum cost, or the best assignment. Now let's go through our first step first. Our first step here is row reduction. As it says, subtract the lowest value in each of the rows. So go through and identify. In row number one here, the lowest value is the number 20. So we'll start to redraw the matrix and we'll go step by step. So the first one would be 0, then 5, then 2, and then 8. In the next row, the lowest number is the number 15. So we keep going like that. I'll just pause for a moment while I fill in the rest. Okay, so that's all the rows reduced. We call this the reduced row matrix. Our second step is the column reduction. Very similar process. We work on the new matrix that we've got here. We'll look for the lowest value in each column. Now, if we go to the first column here, the lowest value is a zero. And if we subtract zeros, nothing changes. The second column will be the same. With our third column, the smallest value we have is a one. So our first column won't change. The second one won't change. Now we'll subtract one from each of these entries. And same with the fourth column. Now we get down to the third step. This is where the fun begins. In the third step, we cover the zeros with the least number of lines. Now, I'm going to be looking here at the matrix. I'm going to be looking for rows or columns that have the highest number of zeros to cover. So the, the bottom row down here has three zeros. I'll cover them up all in one go. I've got now two zeros in this column, so I can get rid of them. And there's still one left doesn't really matter if I use a column or a row, I might go a column. They're all covered. I used three lines, but I have four allocations to make, don't I? So the number of lines here is three. The number of allocations, that's four. There are four people. The number of allocations is the size of the matrix. So I'd probably make a little note here in my working that I had three lines which is less than the four allocations that I need to make. Now that means, that means that I'm down here. The number of lines is less than the number of allocations. I need to use the Hungarian algorithm. The Hungarian algorithm is this set of steps here. So let's follow this. Find the smallest uncovered value. Well, the uncovered values are in this corner, and the smallest one is a unit, is one. Part B. Add this to every entry which is under a line or lines. Add twice if there are two. So the entries in the bottom here will get added. That one will be added twice because there's an intersection of two lines. Then adding a single one along here. It's probably clearer if I start to redraw the matrix. So going across the top there, I'll add one to this, I'll add one to this, but those next ones would be unchanged. I'll add one, and then I'll add one there, but the seven and the one are unchanged. I'll add there, I'll add there, the three and the six are unchanged. Now this two in the bottom corner, I'll have to make that a four. That one's a two, and then a one and a one. So the ones that were in under two in an intersection, I added twice. 
because there were two lots. The third step is quite easy. I subtract the value, the value of one, from everything in the matrix. So I'll go 0, 5, 0, 6, 0, 3, 6, 0, 2, 0, 2, 5, 3, 1, 0, 0. So that's the Hungarian algorithm, and now it says repeat from step 3. Step 3 was draw our lines. Let's see, I've got, I can cover 2 there, 2 there. I can cover two that way. There we go. We've got more than four lines. I think we're ready to do our allocation. So we will make our graph for A, B, C, D, and then across the top we have one, two, three, four. We add edges to the graph wherever the zeros were. Um, might be clearer if I add in the A, B, C, D again down the side and I'll put the 1, 2, 3, 4 at the bottom this time for the jobs. So in the first row, A can do job 1 or job 3. In the second row, B can do job 1 or job 4. Third row, C can only do job 2. And the last row, D can do job 3. Oh. My mistake, I hit the wrong one then. D can do job three or job four. So every edge in my graph should correspond to a zero in my final matrix. Now let's allocate. Remember to go for, for the ones that have a degree of one. So that's a degree of one. I must make that allocation. Now I have choices. The others are all degree two. So let's see how we go. If I tentatively allocate D to job four, then T can't do three, so A must do job three, and then B can do job number one. So every person has a single job. We write this down by saying A is doing job number three, B is doing job number one, C is job number two, and D is job number four. The costs from those jobs are all the way, 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 way back up there. I'll just pause while I go and copy them. Okay, so I've just copied my original matrix from the top there. So if A is doing job three, B is going to do job one, C will do job two, and D will do job four. We can then add up the costs of those. That's a 22, a 15, a 17, and a 24. And what do we end up with? Two and five are seven, and seven are 14, and four is 18. Carry the one, three, four, five, to a seven. Our total cost to allocate the jobs in this way is 78. And that is how we use the Hungarian algorithm. You might like to take down what's written here in your notes, a future reference. Thanks for watching.